You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a new show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired for this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Thank you so much for joining us here on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. You know, every time I have a chance to interview a cast member of The Sopranos, it's amazing memories with my family as we gathered in the living room and watched it together. Sopranos Con added a successful event last year, and they are at it again with another con October 10th. And who better to invite than Federico Castelluccio, who played Furio Gunta. Federico is an amazing artist, actor, and just a kind soul. I always love interviewing him. Take a look. Federico, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Thank you so much, Melissa. This is our third encounter. Uh, I interviewed you at uh, Sopranos Con. We put you on the cover of Cool Magazine last year. You know, you have a new con coming up. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Sopranos Con, uh, and it's an event that we're doing at the Sopranos house, actually Tony Sopranos house that we where we shot the film, uh, I mean the series, uh, and it's an exclusive event. It's a very limited uh, amount of people that will be there. Uh, mm. It will be a star event. Um, there'll be about uh, eight to ten actors uh, from from The Sopranos, and uh, we will have a Q and A. Uh, the, the audience, of, you know, the audience members that will be invited uh, will be able to ask us any kind of questions. There'll be a moderator there. Uh, there will be food. It's, it's an unprecedented event because it's being held right at the Sopranos house in North Caldwell, New Jersey. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> Do you still have tickets left over? Yeah, I think there's about, uh, they're going fast. I think there's about eight tickets left. And there's, there's, it, we're, you know, we're limiting it to, you know, very, very few people because, um, you know, because of COVID, obviously. COVID. Yeah, so and everybody it, will do social distancing. Exactly. It's an outdoor event. We're taking all precautions. Uh, it'll, it'll be a, you know, a very safe event. Yeah. How was the Sopranos con last year? That was insane. I was there. Um, Unbelievable. <laughs> I, I was personally, you know, working on it the whole time with, mm -hmm. uh, with Michael Mata, Joseph Fama and Dan Trader. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, these are super fans we're talking about. These guys, Michael Mata has, uh, has been a person that, I, that I've worked with in the past. He's, uh, he's had some Sopranos events. We, we, uh, we remained friends over the years and told me about uh, these, these super fans that wanted to do this, this convention. And I thought it was an incredible idea. And I said, you know, if you guys don't do it, I know somebody else will. Yeah. So you know, they hopped on it. I helped them out as much as I could. Uh, about, to, I think we were, we were expecting like 4,000 to 4,500 people. 15,000 showed up. <laughs> wow. Everybody came from around the world. I met people from Australia. Yeah. We had people <laughs> all over the world, Melissa. It was, it so was just, crazy. I mean, I had lines from the, from the minute I sat down to the end of the evening. I didn't even get a chance to experience the whole thing. We had Dominic Kinez, who, who was, was singing at the, at, I think, at the, uh, in the evening on the Saturday night. He was yeah. singing beautiful Italian songs. We had uh, Alabama Three that was singing the actual, they were playing the actual opening song uh, to the Sopranos. It was amazing. It was an incredible event. I know. I waited in line to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it in my drawer here with the rest of my buddies. You didn't have to wait in line. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was so nice. And <laughs> Federico, if I can just tell the audience of what an amazing person you are, you were exhausted. You were there literally for hours and people kept coming to you and you had like bodyguards near you and they're like, he's tired. He's got to go. And he's like, no, no, no. Federico's like, no, let me, I want to keep signing because these people came from, you know, far away to see us. So thank you so much for being so kind. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's really important. I, I think, you know, the fans are what make 
us, basically. I mean, they, mm. they're the ones who, who really uh, deserve to, to have the time to meet us and to, to get an autograph and a picture. Uh, so I, I, I just don't want to disappoint anybody. I think that, you know, it's so important to, uh, to please, please the fans, you know. You're so kind. And you're in partnership uh, with these Soprano Cons. Why is it so important for you to keep these alive? Well, just exactly what I said. It's yeah. The, the tagline is for the fans. Fan. By yeah. So it's all about the fans. I mean, there, there's still a, a demand to to uh, to meet some of the actors and and uh, and just experience, uh, you know, what it is to 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 talk to a Sopranos actor. You know, yeah. uh, it's it's really it's about them more than anything. And they're the ones really, uh, if you think about it, um, it's now, what, 20 years later? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's literally 20 years later, and we have all of these fans still interested in coming and knowing about us and meeting us. And uh, it's, it's really, it was an iconic uh, television series. So, I mean, um, you know, I was a fan before I ever got on, too. <laughs> yeah, tell us about the time when you got your call, when you got your call, you wanted to go and um, audition for Furio. Oh, okay. but, you did, but it wasn't Furio. You actually auditioned for somebody else. I auditioned for, yeah, I auditioned for another role, uh, which my manager, actually my, my, my agent, uh, Bob Barry at the time, God rest his soul, was a great guy yeah. uh, from BHB, Barry Half Brown. Uh, they, he called me up and said, listen, Federico, you know, I know you've been wanting to get an audition for this show. You've been bugging me week after week. I finally got an audition. I said, great. Uh, hopefully it's not you know, one day thing, you know, it's not like an under five or anything like that. Uh, he, he says, well, I'll send you the sides and, you know, you'll read it. I sent your picture in, they want to see you. Mm -hmm. I read it and I was like, at the time I was 34 and they were looking for a John Gotti type. You know, this is, I, I didn't look like that. I had long hair. With yeah. some look at the You're still scoring top. the ponytail. So no, it's <laughs> six, eight months already. And I've been, you know, my hair grows kind of fast. But anyway, uh, so I told my, I called my manager up. I said, I, I said, Hey, Bob, I said, this, this is like a John Gotti type. This is totally not me. Mm -hmm. he said, I, I mean, he goes, well, they want to see you. So go in. I went in, got a call back and then never heard anything else. Right. When I saw who they got, which was uh, Vince Curatola, man, he was so perfect for that role. And you could tell that the casting you know, and that's why they won an Emmy. I mean, they, they won an Emmy for casting. Yes. For uh, they, they absolutely nailed it with, uh, with uh, you know, Vince Giratola, a wonderful actor, by the way. The second time was about yeah. six, eight months down the road. And, uh, you know, Bob calls me and says, hey, listen, you know, uh, I'm going to send you something. At the time, we were, you know, they would send faxes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a fax of this, this character. Uh, I think, you know, you're, you're right for it. I read it. And I was like, Furio Junta, for, oh no, it's just Furio from Italy, Tony Soprano's cousin. Mm -hmm. was Tony Soprano's cousin. And, you know, he comes, he's, he's born in Italy and comes to New Jersey. And, and so there was a, I, I called him back up and I said, listen, man, this, this is, this couldn't be more perfect. And went into the audition. I remember, I think it was Mary Clay Bolin who was there that day and she, put me on tape for the producers. Mm -hmm. And I remember her shutting the tape and saying, Federico, thank you so much. That was like a breath of fresh air. And wow. I said, well, I've never heard that one before. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I walked out of there feeling pretty good, you know, and my, my agent calls me back up and says, look, they want to, the, the, they sent the tape into the producers. They want to see you in two days. Mm -hmm. So I went auditioned for the producers, uh, then the third callback was with James Gandolfini. I waited about almost two and a half weeks. And mm -hmm. they were, it, apparently what I found out later was that I was one of the first guys to come in and blew them away. And it was, it was too good to be true. So wow. as a, and a director, you know, a producer wants to see other people, wants to see if there's anybody out there that they feel is more right for it, you know? Sure, yeah. And, when they didn't find anybody in two and a half weeks, they called me back to read with, with Jim Gandolfini. And uh, that's when the, basically the deal was sealed. When you first met uh, Jim Gandolfini, he's such a wonderful man. How did you, um, how was your relationship with him? Well, uh, you know, you have to understand, 
there were a lot of people that didn't know uh, James Gandolfini. I knew who he was um, through like small little roles that he did, through mm -hmm. little, little theater things that he did. Um, you know, I, I saw him in A Streetcar Named Desire, uh, and Aida Turturro was in that as well, and I, I was friends with Aida. Many yeah. years. Um, and so, you know, I would, I would catch him in these supporting character roles. And one day I was, I was going to see a friend of mine, uh, Tim Williams. You probably know who Tim Williams is because he became famous for a commercial, the Trivago guy. The yes, Trivago. yes. Very handsome guy, by the way. <laughs> Studied acting together. And uh -huh. uh, I w me and my buddy Tiagi Schwartz, we went to go see him. We all studied together. And he was... He was doing a play with Angelica Torn, which was Rip Torn and Angelica Page uh, and uh, Geraldine Page's daughter. Mm -hmm. And we all of a sudden we're sitting down, getting ready for the for the play to start. And somebody walks in and comes up and sits behind us. And I'm looking. I said, I, I moved to Tiagi. I go, Tiagi, you see this guy, man? He's an unbelievable actor, a tremendous yeah. actor. And you know, it was James Gandolfini. And wow. I didn't say to them at the time and uh when i auditioned for it that was basically the first time we actually interacted when when we had to uh basically do a, uh, a screen test for soprano and when i first worked with him on the set mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, big girls don't cry that was the episode and the very first thing i shot was the scene where i go into the brothel and just wreak havoc and yes. And it was about 3.34 in the morning when we finished and, you know, there, everybody was tearing down and, you know, we were in the middle of the street and I saw, uh, I saw James Gandolfini there standing there and I went over to him and I said, hey, uh, uh, James, and he said, you just called me Jim. I said, okay. And he yeah. said, Jim, you know, I just want to tell you that it's an incredible honor working with you, man. I've been following your work for a long time. And he, he looked at me like this, he's been following my work. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, and guy. I said, Times I said that that tells me so much about the character of James Gandolfini. Yes, down to earth guy. He was a guy's guy, and he was an actor's actor, tremendous actor. He left an incredible legacy for us, uh, you know. Uh, and I, you know, the only sad thing is that he left us too early. Absolute, you know? absolute. I had the honor of meeting him that year, a couple of months before he perished with um, Tony Sirocco. They were Tony going. Sir Tony Sirico, and uh, they were going to a funeral and I met him at Lenny's Clam Bar and he sat down with Mike Sullivan. He owns uh, Brennan and Carr and he was just the kindest and nicest person. That's when I was going to become a cop. So obviously Tony's sitting right next to me. He's like, oh, I want you to arrest me. You know how his personality is. I, I've met, never met these guys, but they were so kind. And uh, Jim was so patient with us and he wanted to make sure everybody got a photo. And, uh, you know, I was just so upset when we heard of his passing and um, his son is so gorgeous, looks just like him. It's amazing. I know. And I can't wait to see the prequel. Uh, I heard there was a reshoot recently. Yeah. Uh, Jersey. I, th I think it may have been at, uh, uh, at Holston's. Uh, where I think that they did a reshoot at Holston's. Uh, somebody it came through a grapevine, but uh, the, 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 fil uh, the film actually is in the can, I heard. They were going to release it this year, late this year, but I'm not sure if that's still on the schedule. They're probably going to do it next year because of COVID and stuff. Is Michael playing his father? Is that what's going on? I, or? Yeah, Michael is playing young Tony Soprano. Wow. So, uh, what, you know, what huge shoes to fill, I'm telling you. Yeah. But, uh, that he's good. He was on a television series, uh, recurring on a television series. I forgot which one, but anyway, he, uh, they said that he's, uh, he's got the chops. And I'm very God bless. You know, I want to just, I would like for you to tell that story. Um, uh, the episode where you did the whole havoc, where you went and you beat the lady up. Remember you did that whole thing and you, what did you do? You punch the guy <laughs> and he had to punch her. Can you yeah. tell that story? I like it. <laughs> It shows your kindness. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Mm. When we did that scene, well, let me, let me back up a little bit. Sure. I, when I, with my first audition for producers and director, mm -hmm. for, um, that was uh, Tim Van Patten was the dir director of, of that uh, episode. I came in and I think that, you know, being that they, what Terry Winter said, Terry Winter is actually the one who created Furio Junta. He created mm -hmm. Furio uh, and he was one of the writers at the time, and he, um, 
he told me later on that, you know, they had so many people coming in, you know, dressed like, uh, you know, like in, all in white with a, a hat, you know, mafia guy. They had no concept of what this character was. And he yeah. says, what you brought to the table was almost like you walked off of my page. That's right. <laughs> only thing was that you, your, your build was, was athletic, but we, we weren't sure if you, you could throw a punch, you could, you know, you could fight. Yeah. So he said, when you did, when you mimicked all the fighting in the thing, I, I remember them sitting back when I was doing all the, the, you know, the kind of fighting and stuff. That that that's all my background from Patterson. You know, I would get in a fight every other week. Yeah. <laughs> streets, but uh, you know, and so that was all preparation for Furio, I guess. <laughs> Absolute, yeah. Uh, so when I when I actually did the scene. I remember the, uh, the Asian woman, the Asian actress, she came up to me. Oh, well, she came up, to, she sent me a, a letter after we, we had worked together. Mm -hmm. She said, Federico, it was such a pleasure working with you. I couldn't have been beat up by a nicer guy. That's right. <laughs> that was so cute, you know, it was really sweet that, you know. That well, they said, had, they had it in the, I mean, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but they had it in the script for you to hit her twice. And you're like, hey, listen, I, I'm a big guy. I'd kill her if I knocked her twice. So you. That's one, of, one. Well, that's one of the things that I, that I said. There were several things that, that in that particular scene, I felt um, there, was, there was something missing in Italianismo. And I, I, um, I, I, I basically ad-libbed a, a, a couple of lines towards the end. Yeah. And um, it was well known that they didn't want any ad-libbing. They wanted their lines and that's it. Right. But really kind of felt... At the, in the moment that everything was going so well that I just I just did it, and so then I didn't hear from them for two and a half weeks, and I'm like I totally screwed that up, man. I I'm not gonna get this job, and like oh man, I kept calling my my agent, and he's like, look, the you know it's still on the breakdowns, meaning it's still not cast the role. Yeah. So, and man, I can't believe it. I I know I nailed that, and you know, and so uh, <laughs> it turns out when I came back to read with Gandolfini, yeah, that that I ad libbed in Italian was written in the script. <laughs> oh, so Mike. It was, it was cool. It was the whole thing was, was, was really cool. And I told him, I said, you know, two punches. They even, they even had me shooting and we actually shot, we, we shot that scene where I, I shoot the guy in the knees twice. Yeah. So that was overkill. So, you know, we just, they cut out the second shot and I just, we just, you know, uh, showed one, one uh, sh shot to the knee. Uh, and, and it turns out that uh, the, the actor who played that role, his name was Stephen Payne. Yeah, Stephen you know, Payne. <laughs> and he did, it, he did it real well. Actually, we, we knew each other. We, uh, we had worked together uh, many years ago in a play. Uh, so what, uh, what advice for the new actors that are listening, what advice would you give to them if you have, a, a, you know, a, an inkling to change something and you really are feeling uh, strongly about this change? Would you recommend well, somebody telling the director or the writer? Yeah, I mean, look, if you're, if you're auditioning, you gotta, you know, it's basically, it comes down to choices. Mm. It's, you feel very strongly about a change. Either you speak to them and tell them that you're gonna do it, or you just do it and see how it goes. But right. if, it, if it feels natural to you, if it feels right, um, you know, I would go for it uh, in an audition. But if you're, hired and you're you know you're you're, you're dealing with a director mm -hmm. you, you would have to go up to the director and discuss it it's always important to discuss any kind of changes that you feel are necessary right. or fine changes or anything like that uh with the director and if if they feel strongly about it uh they'll say well you know what maybe we'll shoot one that way and uh maybe we'll shoot one that way and you know we can we can do it my way as well Sometimes they'll do that or they say, no, that, I'm sorry, but that won't work. Mm -hmm. But as long as you have dialogue with the director, uh, you know, you'll be okay. And yeah. but the young, to young actors that are out there, um, I think that one of the most important things to, to do when you're, when, you're, when you're just getting a job is to come prepared. Know your lines, uh, come prepared, uh, you know, really... Uh, have have your lines down where you're free and you know you can play with it you can play with the scene right 
Thank you so much for that. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure these guys would appreciate that. Now, you grew up in Patterson, New Jersey. You studied art. You are a fantastic artist. Uh, these paintings that you do. W what? Tell us about your art, please. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, art has, has always been in my family. And my father, uh, you know, painted in Naples when, when, uh, when he was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my sister was good with fashion, drawing, design. My, my, my older brother, uh, you know, Antonio went to uh, art school as well. My, my other brother, Marco, was, uh, was a musician for many years. He played, you know, he, was, he, he had so many bands that he started, uh, you know, rock and roll bands. He's an incredible guitarist. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my sister, Ines, I, I didn't mention her name, but uh, she's always been very artistic uh, with, you know, like I said, with uh, fashion design and, and stuff like that. But nobody really took it to a, a profession uh, like I did, basically. Um, I, I felt very strongly that I, I, I had this innate ability and innate talent uh, for drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I studied formerly on, uh, formally on, on scholarship. Uh, at the School of Visual Arts, and, and um, I won that through uh, the high school I went to, which was Passaic County Tech in, uh, in Wayne, New Jersey. And uh, so I had a BFA, uh, you know, a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree mm -hmm. uh, from the School of Visual Arts. And, and then I wound up uh, getting the opportunity, actually this was back in 1982, before I went into, I, I got the opportunity to do a painting for the veteran actor, George Burns. Right. And that, that opened up some doors uh, in the illustration world. I started doing illustrations for um, NBC, CBS, all the major networks, uh, and PBS as, as well, uh, for a gentleman by the name of Frank Goodman. He, uh, he hired me. And so I was working professionally while I was just getting into school, you know, to learn painting and to learn uh, painting techniques, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, and get my art history background and uh, my humanities and everything. So, yeah, so, but uh, I've been painting ever since. I've had uh, numerous shows over the years. Yes. Uh, overseas, I'm, I'm collected internationally. Uh, I'm in quite a few different museums internationally. Wow. Um, and uh, there's, if you go on the Yale Museum website, you'll see four of my paintings in the permanent collection. That's so uh, awesome. It's a, it's a, you know, it's not a hobby. People say, oh, so you have a hobby. No. This, this is a serious profession. And I studied uh, anatomy for four years. Uh, I was contemplating, uh, you know, being a, a, an orthopedic surgeon at one mm -hmm. point. And now I have two nephews who are doctors. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The neurologist, Stefan uh, Gillen. And, uh, Ed, uh, and then uh, we have a veterinarian, uh, David Gillen, uh, who is uh, oh. my kids. Anyway... I proud of them as you can tell <laughs> absolutely absolutely do you have a gallery in new uh, jersey the gallery sent, i have there's a small gallery that sells my work that you mm -hmm. know that shows and represents my work uh they mainly show european painters mm -hmm. and uh, there's a little story that i want to tell uh, uh, i was doing a, a charity event uh for children with cancer um and a, a friend of mine uh, came over to me and said, listen, he, he was one of the organizers. Uh, his name is Jimmy Wahlberg. He's Mark, Mark Wahlberg's brother. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, there's this guy who has a gallery right down the street. And, you know, I want him to see your work. He says, I know you brought your portfolio because you wanted to show me. Yeah. He goes, I said, no, it's okay. Don't worry. We're here. You know, we're doing this event. And he goes, no, no. He goes, uh, I said, please, uh, Jimmy. I said, this is not the right time. He goes, give me your keys. <laughs> he goes to my car and gets the portfolio, and he shows, he shows my work to, mm -hmm. to this gentleman, older gentleman. And it, he comes over and he says, listen, I love your work. He goes, can you come to my gallery and meet my wife? She's my partner. I go, wow. That I, I, I just don't have the time. I, I committed my time here to help these kids and to, you know. And he goes, do you mind if I bring her here? So he brings his wife there. And they flip out. They want, to, they want to start representing my work. And I said, how about this? Next week, I'll come to your gallery. You said you have an opening. I'll come and check it out, and then we'll talk. And so they turned out to be the nicest couple, the Chetkins, their name. And it's called the Chetkin Gallery. They're very, very sweet. And uh, we started working together. And it's been about five or six years. And we've done incredibly well. 
uh, there, there is a need for, uh, for uh, good realism, and that's exactly what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, work from life mainly. I set up a still life, uh, or sit, you know, person sits in front of me, and I, I, I go to town painting, basically. And so, you know, it's, if people want to go see it, they can check it out on their, their website, uh, so chetkingallery.com. Uh, you can Google it. Can people purchase your artwork? Absolutely. If you go to firstdibs.com, First dibs, like the, the number one ST and then dibs. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's some pieces up there and it goes through the gallery. Mm. Yeah, puts it up there as well. Thank you so much. Now, when you're not doing self-portraits, where does your inspiration come from? Well, well, when I'm doing, por you know, portraits or paintings or still mm -hmm. life, uh, self-portrait means that, you know, you're, you're looking in the mirror and you're doing a self-portrait. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you do one of yourself, though? I did. I did. Oh, There's, that's so cool. Artists over, over the centuries in, in history always did sort of self-portraits. It's sort of an introspective look within yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. well, I find them very interesting. And I, I have several self-portraits of 17th century painters, uh, you know, that are, that are very intriguing. Um, but the inspiration for a painter or an artist or a musician or an actor mm -hmm. comes from so many different places. I mean, for me, sometimes I look at another painter and I'll, I'll get so inspired by that painter and it'll inspire me to do something similar or, you know, take, do another take on it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with uh, may, maybe a, a film. Uh, if you see certain things, you know, like that, that, really, that really hit you inside, uh, you know, you, you get inspired and you're like, I want to write something similar to that. Yeah. Or, or beauty inspires me, you know, you know objects, different things, nature. Um, that, that, their inspiration comes from many, many different places. Yeah. Your paintings are filled with love because that you're putting all your energy inside of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you know, Federico, I just saw you on uh, celebrity ghost hunters. So I am a, I am like a paranormal crazy person. I've had mediums on, I've had people from the travel channel on my show and I saw you, I'm like, Oh my God, there he is. Yeah. What? Tell us. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what happened to you? You were actually painting. Yeah, I, um, I was working on a, a huge painting. It was like six feet by maybe 30 feet. It was, in, it was a, a diptych. It's called mm -hmm. a, because it's in two pieces. Right. And you know, it was for one, one big painting. It was for uh, the Chase family, the Manhattan Chase family. Uh, and it was for their summer home. I remember I went to... Uh, I went to London to study a specific palette of the uh, Orientalists, which were English and Italian and European painters that went to uh, the Far East and, and studied, you know, uh, you know, the Indian culture and colors. And, and they did uh, a lot of landscape paintings. Right. And so I studied that palette, I, you know, and I needed a, a large studio. My, my studio wasn't big enough for that. So I rented a studio in a 40 room mansion in, uh, in Madison, New Jersey. Wow. And so nobody lived there except for a, a Catholic priest that lived upstairs from me. He used to be a cop, very interesting guy. Uh, and, and so I, you know, I would paint late into the night, you know, three, four in the morning and then either, you know, stay there, sleep there, or just go home. So one night, you know, and I would always have the door open, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And so I was, I remember I was painting and I had the music kind of blasting and, and from the corner of my eye, I saw uh, someone peek in, you know, someone short peek in through the door. And I, yeah. I looked and the head went back out. And I'm like, hey, hello. <laughs> and what the hell is, who's that? Who's that? I, I go out into the hallway and there's a wide hallway. Yeah. And I looked both ways and I was like, oh, oh my God. I <laughs> shut the door right away. I was like, that freaked me out, man. Oh my God. What? I mean, hopefully that was somebody that just ran away, but I didn't hear. Anyway. A couple of days later, or maybe the next day, I forget when it was, I saw the priest. And I said, his name was Ed Dillon, Father Ed Dillon. And I said, uh, I said uh, uh, Father, I said, uh, by any chance, did you have someone over the other night? Or, you know, did you have somebody staying with you? He, he said, right. he goes, no, you didn't have like a little, someone like a niece or anything? He <laughs> goes, goes, no, why? I said, he said, well, and you know, there was a school, there was a, 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 like a grammar school on the premises as well right. from, from this mansion. So I was like, you know, I don't know if my mind was playing tricks on me or what, but uh, I, he goes, wait a minute. 
I, I, he goes, what did you, what did you see? I said, I, I, you know, I thought I saw a little girl. Yeah. And he goes, wait a minute, you saw her? And I was like, who is she? <laughs> he goes, that's, and then I, he said, that's Alice. Oh now, my God. Okay. Now you have to understand, I'm remembering this because I got a call from my manager at the time mm -hmm. and she called me up and she says, Hey, listen, you know, there's these people that are doing this show. It's called celebrity ghost stories. I said, Oh man. I said, this sounds cheesy. I said, you know, yeah. she goes, do you have a ghost story? I said, I said, do I have a ghost story? So I start telling her on the phone. She goes, I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> she, goes, she goes, just I'll get the producer on the phone and you talk to him. Wow. So I talk and they are, I said, listen, before I commit to something, could you send me some, some tapes, you know, just to see if this is legit? Yeah. And the tapes, and it was totally legit. There were some really big names on there. Yes. And, uh, you know, and I, so I decided to do it. So when I decided to do it, this was 10, ten years prior, this, this whole event happened. Right. And I, I couldn't remember the, the priest's name. It was like Father something. I don't remember his name. And so... Uh, you know, I said, let me go back there. Maybe there's somebody there that could tell me what the guy's name is because so I could get prepared for the for the show, you know, to remember right. the name. So I go there and I was gonna take some pictures, you know, of the place just to show the producers. So I, I go there and they're doing there's people doing construction on the house, you know, that they're, they're changing the windows, they're doing all kinds of and uh, somebody comes over like a caretaker, he goes, Hey, can I help you? I said, yeah, I was just wondering if I could, you know, go inside and take, he goes, for what? What are you, insurance? I said, no, no, no. I yeah. said, I said, I'm, um, I'm actually an artist and I, I used to have a studio. I used to paint upstairs. Yeah. And he goes, well, what do you want to take pictures for? I said, well, I'm doing a, I'm going on television. I'm doing a television interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said, man, oh ghost stories. <laughs> and he goes, ghost stories. He's like, I, I said, yeah, I saw, uh, a little he said you saw her <laughs> <laughs> apparently there were so many people that saw this little girl oh my god so, uh, i couldn't remember her name so i wanted to but you know i couldn't remember her name prior to going on so i needed to get in touch with father ed <laughs> oh my god i i said do you remember there was a priest he goes yeah uh his name was uh, father ed dylan i said oh great so i said how can i get in touch with him he goes well he's probably with the patterson diocese Mm -hmm. called the Patterson Diocese. They put me in touch with them. Now, before I called the Patterson Diocese, this is, this is, this is a really bizarre thing. Yeah. I'm at, I'm, jo I'm going to Home Depot because I'm doing some work in my house. <laughs> and I get, I get a call from a girl I used to see, you know, a friend of mine, and yeah. she moved to uh, Vegas. Her name was Alice. And so, oh my God. I, on my phone, I go, my God, there's Alice. I, I, I answer the phone. Alice. Hello? Dead. Dead air. Shh. All you hear is this. Shh. I clicked it. I go, ah, it must be a, a, a pocket dial. Oh, my God. Well, so I'm walking out of my car again. Phone rings. It's Alice. Now, mind you, I couldn't remember the girl's name. Yeah. So look at it again. I go, Alice. Was it? Was it, Hello? Alice? <laughs> <laughs> so I call her back. And it goes into her voicemail and I say, Alice, uh, you know, your phone dialed me a couple of times, probably, probably a, um, you know, a butt dial or something like that, but I hope you're doing well. It's been such a long time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Hang up. Fine. I get in touch with, I get in touch with Ed Dillon. I go, Ed, do me a favor, man. I got to go on this thing. I go, what was the name of the girl? The girl that I saw is her name was Alice. Oh my God. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I said, and I was getting these calls from, from Alice on my phone. Oh that my was, God. Well, now, now this is even crazier. And that oh. doesn't, doesn't end there. I'm sorry. But You're this, blowing that, my mind. I love this. <laughs> this is the greatest part of all. Okay. I remember when I went, when I went to the place to take pictures. Yes. I took pictures of the outside. I went inside. I took pictures of the room right where I saw her. I took a picture over there and then I, after I did the interview, I showed the producer the pictures on my phone, my iPhone. Right. Now, when I took the pictures, everything was clear. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he's looking at it. He's like, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I said, what's going on here? The pictures were all blurry. They were, oh. He goes, energy. Yes. I said, really? And he goes, you should take a closer look at those pictures. You might find something. Well, wouldn't you believe the girl's face is on that, that no. photo? No. 
the girl, she's looking at me like this. She's oh got, my God. It, it's, it's like, she's, she's like this. And it's in a swish kind of thing. It's like this. Oh my God. Believe if I could find that picture, I will send it to you. Thank you. Please do. It's first time that anybody has ever seen this picture. Why I mean, did you... friends of mine, close friends of mine have seen it, but you know, I've never showed it to the public. Oh my God. We would love that so much. Yeah. Did you believe in energies or, or ghosts or spirits before this? It, uh, no, I mean, I knew there was an energy. My, you know, I was open to kind of things like that. Yeah. And, you know, when you're, when you're in sort of that alpha state that, that, you know, your mind is open to so many things, like a child, yeah. you know, when you're thinking, you know, you're, you're just thinking of so many things and your mind is just open, you know, it's possible that something enters like that. I, you know, that's what I'm thinking. But, I, you know, I wasn't, a, you know, I never believed in ghosts or anything like that. Do you, you, know, be now, you believe in them now? What? You believe in them now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's no question. There's something else out there, absolutely. Wow. That's so cool. Thank you. I could talk about this for hours and hours. Let's talk about the charity that's near and dear to your heart, Madison Square. Do I have that right? It's a Boys and Girls Club? Boys and Girls Club. Um, it's a wonderful charity. I, I went for the first time, uh, and I was asked... Uh, through my my friend uh, Ken Farrell, who works for B of A Bank of America, mm -hmm. and that it's a wonderful event. It's a Christmas event. Uh, you know, the kids are going to they'll be putting on a performance, a show, and everything. I was so moved. Uh, he had asked me if I would if I would mind donating my time for a dinner, and I yeah. said absolutely. Yeah, you know, we do that from time to time. Um, and so they had a uh, an auctioneer from Sotheby's there, really a veteran auctioneer, and I've, I've We've, I've met this guy before and we've done, he's auctioned me and, and other things off in the past. Right. Um, they started off the auction, uh, I think it was at 5,000 or something like that. And there was this one table that, that kept bidding. And there was this, this, this woman was just so excited. She kept bidding, it kept going up. You know, it went up to like, I think $12,000. And you know, it went to 11 or something like that or 12. Yeah, it went to 11, the, the lady that really wanted it and, you know, and her family were at this one table off to the right. And, you know, the husband looked at her, you go, she goes, you want to go to 13? <laughs> and, he, and she goes, no, that's, you know, it's going to go crazy. Don't. And so yeah. the other table won it at 12. And so she, I could see it in her face. She was so disappointed, uh. you know, <laughs> they bid up to 12,000. And so now I tell the auctioneer, I, I whisper, I said, Tell them I'll do, if, if they'll split it, if they'll both do 12,000, I'll, I'll do both, I'll do two dinners. And so he said, he said, Federico would say he would do both dinners if you would, and they both agreed. So we raised wow. $4,000 in a matter of five minutes. Wow. And so <laughs> you went out to dinner with them? Is that what happens? You, they, you yeah. just, you give them what your happened? time. This was for the Christmas party, so it was in December. Mm -hmm. So. What happened with uh, we, the scheduling has to kind of come after COVID now. So once, once things start opening up and, uh, you know, uh, the people from, uh, uh, from uh, the charity will, will give me a, another schedule mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do those. So it's, it's always fun to meet these people and they, they love the show. Uh, they, you know, they, they, they love the character as well. So it's, uh, it'll be nice. I've, I've done a lot of these things and it's just, uh, it's just a great feeling when you can sort of give back a little bit, you know, yeah, uh, in, your, in, in a small way like this, you know. I love it. And you have a, um, a brand, Badass Brands, and some of the charity organizations that you work with are James Foley uh, Scholarship Fund, the Boys and Girls Club of America, Gary Sinise Foundation for Veterans. What a, I want to have him on this show so bad. He's such an amazing... <laughs> Wonderful actor. Oh, he's so brilliant and so kind. Uh, and also James Gandolfini was into the veterans as well. Right. The, yep. The Wounded Warriors Project. That's right. Yeah. And Folds, you all... You know, we, we're, we're with Folds of Honor as Folds well. Folds of Honor. Which, which is a great uh, organization. Uh, but you know what? The, the veterans are, are very important. They, uh, you know, they, they put their lives up for us, for the American people. And uh, yeah. this we could do is give back. And, and help them out in, in any way we can. Uh, Badass Brands was started by, uh, by John Castitas. Uh, he is a, he's a chiropractor doctor by trade. Mm -hmm. uh, he came up with the idea of registering, you know, you know copywriting the, the, the name Badass mm -hmm. Brands mm -hmm. with a Z. 
Uh, if you go to badassbrands.com, you can see everything. You can read everything about the, the, the brands. It's, it's an apparel line. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it's a fledgling company. It's, you know, we're, we're kind of just kind of getting off. But we, you know, we believe in, in, in giving back. And I think that this is kind of a, a thing that, you know, uh, would, would help a lot of people out. And, you know, a friend of mine, uh, Carl Reyes, who used to work for Showtime, is the one who introduced me to John. And when he told me about what the concept was, he said, uh, you know, the, basically a, a tagline for this is be bad, do good. You know, badass means yeah. you're, you're, you're just a great guy or a great girl. You know, you're doing great things in life. You know, uh, you know, a housewife can be, a, you know, just a badass, you know, because she takes care of kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. does you know, whatever she has to do as a housewife. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it, there could be a, you know, uh, an army veteran that is in his 90s. If he was a badass in his day and he still is. Um, it's for people who, who uh, you know, who do great things uh, for themselves and in life and for other people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great concept and it's a, it's, it's a reason, one of the reasons why I decided to, uh, to be a part of it and sort of be a spokesperson for uh, Badass Brands. And they sell products. Are those your uh, paintings on there, like a copy no. of it? No, not, not my paintings. Uh, there is an artist, uh, you know, Carl Reyes uh, reached out to several different artists. Uh, mm. You know, uh, one is from Serbia, another one. You know, we want to give other people a chance because there's fans all over the world. Yeah. And we give them a chance to, um, you know, to make a few dollars as well as an artist and also to give back, you know, with some of the proceeds that we make. Right. Well, we think that you're a badass. What does it mean to give back, Federico? <laughs> you're so sweet, Melissa. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. What do you, how do you feel when you, when you can give it back? You know, you, you have the ability to give back. Something, I, and honestly, it's the greatest feeling in the world. When I saw, when I saw the faces on those kids, it, it, it gets me so emotional. I, sometimes I can't even talk about it. Yeah. But, you know, uh, what they did, I mean, this, these, some of these things just help them, you know, uh, you know, help them go to school, help them, uh, you know, financially, help them, uh, you know, uh, pursue their dreams uh, in theater and acting. I, I was just blown away. I, I was, I was, so I can't wait to do a, a, another event with them uh, when we can, you know, legally, you know. Yeah. You know, you're a family man. You're a respectful uh, person uh, to human beings. How do you feel about the chaos that's going on in the world right now? How does it affect you? God, I think it has, it, this whole thing has affected the entire world. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, we've been shut down for what, six, seven months now? Uh, yeah. It's been crazy. This, this is a, a total unprecedented event that we're all going through in the world. It makes you feel like we're all in the same place. It's like you, you really feel like you're, yes. you're, you're circumscribed in this, in this one place altogether in the world. Uh, you know, it's, it's disheartening in a way. You know, uh, the, um, the divide that's in this country is, is, is completely... Um, disheartening to me and you know as actors as artists we want the best for everyone we want the best for the world we want the uh you know we, we want to have you know uh we don't want discord it's uh you know i think that hopefully uh things will get better as as you know businesses start coming back up um you know people can start going back out uh yeah. when hopefully there is a you know there's a vaccine or something uh that can that can help out with the with COVID-19. Uh, so yeah, I mean, look, you know, uh, it's it, it, it's disheartening, the whole thing. Yeah. Tell us, thank you very much for that, for giving your insight on, on this crazy year. Uh, tell us your next project, please. Well, I have several projects that are next. Uh, the, the very next project is a film I'm shooting in mid-October, uh, actually October the 16th. Um, it's called The Mick and the Trick. And mm -hmm. it's a funny. And uh, I was uh, I was referred to this role by another actor, and that's very rare in this business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The actor is uh, Peter Green. Uh, he's a tremendous actor who um, who's doing the lead in this, uh, and he plays a um, he plays a hitman who has been doing these these uh, you know these hits for the for the two different mobs. You know the the uh, uh, 
the Spanish mob and the, the Irish mob. And the mm -hmm. reason why he's doing this is because he was sending money to the, to the IRA. <laughs> and so now he's had enough. He, yeah. he doesn't want to do it anymore. And, you know, they want him to do this one last hit. And, uh -huh. and he says, no, I'm out. And obviously, you know, in that world, you can't get out. Yeah. So now he's being, he's, now they, they're, they're trying to kill him. And so I play a detective mm -hmm. uh, in there that uh, basically is a you know, dirty cop. And, <laughs> and he plays both sides. He's, he's getting paid from both sides. So uh, uh, it's a fun role. It's a really good role. Uh, it's, it's one of the supporting characters, supporting leads. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, I'm looking forward to shooting this. And uh, the second, one of the, one of the next projects that I'm working on is the the, uh, the writer, uh, Michael Rissigliano, and the mm -hmm. producer of The Brooklyn Banker, another film director. Yes. Uh, uh, you can check that out on Amazon Prime. <laughs> uh, they asked me to direct their next film, which is called Queen for a Day. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we have been in kind of slow uh, pre-production for this film uh, because of COVID. Uh, so we, uh, you know, once, once things clear up, we're, we're going to uh, be shooting this film next and I'll be directing. Do you like directing better uh, than acting or? Well, I, you know, I love, I love painting and, and acting and then directing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the order uh, that, that, you know, but I think painting is probably the closest to me. I mean, if everything left tomorrow, I still have my thoughts, my canvas, my paints, you know, you know I, can, I can paint and be satisfied artistically. Yeah. Um, Acting is, I love creating a character. I love looking at a set of words that on a, on a page that you know nothing about. It's a blank canvas and, and creating a character from there, a believable character, um, which those are sort of similarities that I make with painting. You know, an empty right. canvas, a set of words that you know nothing about and you create a character. Directing is very interesting because it's even closer to, to acting. I mean, to, to uh, painting mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a visual medium and yes. you're telling a story. You know, you, you're using your implements. Your implements are actors, uh, cinematographers, people on the set. Uh, it's an ensemble effort in order to make, uh, to make a film and it's your vision. You know, when I see people that say, uh, hey, let's co-direct this or something like this, I said, no, you know what? I'll step out because it's one vision. You know, right it gets kind of cloudy when you have two people and unless, you know, you're the Farley brothers <laughs> when you have kind of people, then, then they understand each other a lot better. But uh, I would say painting is the closest. I love acting and directing is a new love that I've been exploring since 2006. Thank you so much for your time. You're amazing. And uh, thank you just so much for being on making a difference with us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. To purchase Federico Castelluccio's artwork, go to firstdibs.com. That's the number one, S-T-D-I-B-S dot com. To learn more about Badass Brands, head over to their website at badassbrands.com. That's B-A-D-A-S-S-B-R-A-N-D-Z dot com. Are you in the mood for Mexican? If you are in the Smithfield, Rhode Island area, head over to the newest, hottest spot in town, Lola's Lounge and Cantina at 55 Douglas Pike. Gracias. If you have a vegan product, make your vegan claim official with the only accredited vegan trademark in the world. Visit www.beveg.com. That's www.beveg.com to apply now. Making a Difference is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Please visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today and subscribe.